Okay. Hey, everybody. Today we have Saisha Ford from Ryerson University with us today. So I'm, I'm excited, like I said, Saisha, to hear more about Ryerson. And um, is this, I love this picture. This must be the city. So yep. the yep. Okay. So I'm going to let you take it from here and share more about Ryerson with us. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So as mentioned, my name is Saisha Ford. I'm a recruitment officer with Ryerson University. Uh, this is what you can expect. This is an aerial view of campus. So we are located right downtown Toronto. You'll see this, the CN Tower in the background, um, right in the middle of the city. And I'll talk a little bit more about the city in a few slides later, but this is a really great idea of sort of what you can expect as a Ryerson student. Now, one of the main things that uh, we like to talk about at Ryerson is the concept of experiential learning. Now, it's a term that is, you know, you, it's very popular, especially if you're looking at a lot of uh, Canadian schools. We, we all have a mandate for uh, to build experiential learning into our programs. But a lot of students ask the question of what does experiential learning look like? So I like to kind of give an example. So you'll see the list here. We have things like internships, co-op, service learning, live actor simulation. If I were to give an example from my undergrad because I studied business at Ryerson. Uh, I was a human resources grad. So uh, my professor, or one of my professors used live actor simulation. So she had us go through a whole um, onboarding process or hiring process in our class. So we went through resumes. She hired actors that came in and did uh, live simulation interviews with us. We shortlisted those, those resumes and we were able to you know, hire um, someone uh, during our class. But you'll also find things like in our engineering program, you have a cooperative internship. So that's 12, uh, 12 months of paid work experience in your field. Our film program has a mandatory internship. So students have to Really get out there and get hands-on experience in the industry. Um, Canada is known as Hollywood North, so we do have really great opportunities for students to get that experience. If uh, anybody's interested in sciences or nursing, we do have a lot of, we have biomedical labs on campus, so where you can get some of that hands-on experience as well. And our focus on hands-on uh, learning is really why we can say 87% of our graduates find jobs in their field within six months of graduation. So that's a really great stat that we're quite we're quite proud of and truly believe that it's because of uh, how we build and weave experiential learning into all of the 60 plus programs that we offer at Ryerson. Now, one aspect of um, experiential learning that is a little unique to Ryerson is something called zone learning. So pretty much what that means is we have 10 spaces or zones on campus for students to start their own business. So if a student, you know, wakes up one morning in second year and has this burning idea to start, you know, their global enterprise and they don't know where to start, they can come to our zone, they pitch the idea to our idea consultant, and they then patent pair them up or match them up with one of these zones. So you'll see there's a biomedical zone, clean energy, there's one for fashion, there's one for social ventures. What the zones do is they help students find, uh, pair them up with mentors and help them find funding. So this has been a very, very successful model. We're the number one university-based incubator in the world and students have generated over $700 million in funding for their, for their businesses and created over 400 companies. So it's a really great option for students that maybe want to get that experiential or to sort of become part of the um, entrepreneurship ecosystem before they graduate. And when did you say they can start to do that? When can they do that? Year start one. Right away? One year one to year four. I gave the example of year two, but like it's literally year one to year four. And even after you graduate, you'll have access to the zones as well. That's really cool. Yeah. So and it's not something you need to apply for. It's something you, it's just a value add piece. Um, something that students can just take advantage of. And even if a student doesn't have an idea for a business but wants to be part of this sort of ecosystem, um, they can bring their skill set so they could actually be hired to work with one of the startups. So the idea is we've had students who were engineering students who wanted to start fashion brands, for example, but didn't know how to draft and didn't know some of the basics. But we had a fashion student that was able to work with them and then together they were able to launch that brand. Right? So you don't have to come with the idea for the business. You can bring the skill set that you're developing in your program or even outside of your program and help launch another business and work with somebody else. Wow, that, that is really unique. That's yeah, I, I really like it. I wish it was around when I was a person, <laughs> but um, I like to think that, you know, I was part of, you know, the building of the zones. I like to think of it as that, but yeah, it's a really great opportunity. 
So we're back to campus. So like I mentioned, we are downtown Toronto. So Toronto is the largest city in Canada. Um, we are just vibrant um, arts and culture. In you'll see that on the bottom there, there's the quad. So this uh, green space sort of on, on the bottom of the screen. So that's a really big space for us because we are in the city. So there's not always, you know, lush fields that you can run through, but we do definitely have that op option right on campus. We're about a 10 minute walk from um, Sugar Beach, which is a, a beach right along the uh, our harbor front area. So, and you're about a 10, 15 minute walk from all of the major sports uh, teams in Toronto, and you're directly across the street from the largest mall in Toronto. So tons of opportunities, while, whether you're in class or outside of class. Um, so it's a, I personally born and raised in downtown Toronto, obviously went to Ryerson uh, many years ago and um, it was a fantastic place to study and it's a fantastic place to live and a fantastic place to work. So no complaints over here. A lot of students ask if we have residences on campus because we are a city school. So when students think city school, they think they're taking buses to class or like they have to walk a long way our campus is actually on four city blocks. So you can walk from one side of campus to the other in about 10 minutes. And so we're a pretty self-contained campus just in a larger city. Our residences are on campus. So within that 10 minute, um, uh, the 10 minute walk that I was mentioning, the four city blocks, you do see our residences there. So they all have different styles and you'll see that we have the URL on the bottom, but to give you sort of an idea of what we offer, we have single rooms. So mostly you'll find that in this building at the bottom here called the ILC, ILC. That is a converted hotel. So that's what you're sort of picturing when you're picturing the type of room. Uh, this middle picture here is Pittman Hall. Pittman has more dorm style, so that traditional two students to the room, as well as apartment style. So shared living and dining facilities and then three bedrooms. At the top here, you will find uh, DCC or Daphne Cockwell Health Sciences Complex. The bottom of that complex is classes, so for our health sciences programs. And then the top will be residences, and those will be mostly apartment style as well. And then you'll find uh, this building here called Home. Similar, um, it, these, you can tell that these are two newer buildings that were built within the last uh, three, four years or so. Uh, and that would be apartment style. All of our layouts and virtual tours are located on our website, ryerson.ca slash housing. So I highly encourage for students that are looking to apply, do your research ahead of time because our application is going to ask you to rank all of the different types of rooms that we offer. So you would need to know that you prefer the apartment style in Pittman over the apartment style in Daphne Cockwell Health Sciences Complex. It gets that specific. So um, always encourage students to take a look at that. You'll also be able to see the breakdown in uh, fees for depending on the type of residents that you're looking at. I do have an, another slide that I'll talk a little bit about fees, but they range depending on the type of room that you're looking for. Uh -oh, did my computer freeze? Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. So we do have a lot of supports for international students. One of our main offices uh, is the International Student Support Office. So they're there to help even prospective students. So students like yourselves who are not um, yet Ryerson students, they can assist with learning about how do you apply for your study permit? When do you apply for your study permit? Can you work on campus? Yes, you can. Uh, can you work off campus? Yes, you can. So you can work on or off campus for up to 20 hours a week with your study permit. So to help you uh, generate some income while you're studying. They'll also talk to you about, they run their own orientation. So pre-orientation activities uh, to help acquaint you with the city and to help just special information that would be, that would be needed for our international students. Um, they also can speak to you a little bit about our postgraduate work permit. So with your study permit in Canada, so this is not just uh, for Ryerson, but this is in Canada overall. If you, uh, once you graduate from your undergraduate program, you can stay in Canada for up to three years after graduation to work. So that is a big selling point for students and our uh, international student support or ISS as I call it sometimes, uh, would be able to walk you through that. They also have the steps on their website that you'll see there at the bottom. 
In addition to these uh, international student supports, we also do have student supports uh, related to, uh, we have a counseling center we also, where, where we offer uh, individual and group counseling sessions. We have a student accommodation. So if you in high school have an individual education plan or have any accommodations while you're in high school and you want that to continue when you're at Ryerson, we have a department that will assist you with that transition. We also have uh, a student learning center. So that's for things like assistance with essays and tests and peer mentoring and peer tutoring, we have those available for students as well. And it was on my second slide. I didn't have to memorize it. There it is. So you can take a look and see uh, the different types that I was mentioning. So the accommodation support, uh, I didn't mention the career and co-op center. So most universities will have this for you. We start from year one, getting you prepared for what does an interview look like? How do you prepare? How do you network? Cause that's going to be a big part of your undergraduate degree. Um, how do you, how do we prepare you year one for when it's time for you to find a job, a full-time job in year four or year five. Uh, so these, these are the different supports that you will find at Ryerson. Cost to consider. Um, tuition ranges between 28 to 38,000 Canadian dollars per year. It's a pretty big gap and I'll explain the difference. So our liberal arts programs tend to be on the 28,000 side and our engineering and architectural science are our most expensive undergraduate programs and you will find those on the $38,000 side. All of the other programs that we offer, so whether it's business or sciences or journalism, nursing, fashion, interior design, um, those would all fall in the middle of that range there. If we're looking at the total cost of attendance, so looking at tuition, housing, books, supplies, and food, the range is between 41 to 67. So this range takes into account the difference in tuition, but also the difference in residence. As I mentioned, depending on the style of building and, and room that you're looking at, it does vary. So it can be between nine to seventeen thousand dollars, just that range of the of the housing alone. But I know a lot of our American students like to know that total cost of attendance, so that is there for you uh, to take a look and see what you're looking at. Um, in terms of scholarships, Ryerson does offer a President's Entrance Scholarship as well as an International Secondary School Merit Scholarship. You do need to apply for them, so you are not automatically considered for these scholarships. The largest is the President's, uh, that's, which is $10,000, and you get it renewable for each, for each of your four years, so a total of $40,000. And the International Secondary School Merit Scholarship is one time, and it's $5,000. The deadline to apply for these is March 1st. So I know you likely, or you may not have an answer or an, an offer from Ryerson by March 1st, so a lot of students are like, how do... Why do I apply for scholarships before I have an offer? That's just the process that we have. It takes a while for us to get through the applications. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get that application in. And if you end up uh, receiving the scholarship and coming to Ryerson, fantastic. It'll go into your student account. If you end up going to another school, but you were awarded the scholarship, no problem. It will go to the next student on the list. So I highly encourage students uh, to submit their applications for the scholarships. We also do take the direct loan program through FAFSA. Uh, we also take Sally May as well as uh, the GI Bill. So those can be applied uh, to Ryerson as well. Admissions. So uh, if you are doing the standard US curriculum, we are looking for a minimum of a B overall in your, in your final year, so in your senior year, and a minimum of a B in your subject prerequisites. Now, on our website, uh, ryerson.ca, we do have specific subject prerequisites depending on the program you're looking for. So for example, if you want to come into my history program, we require English, versus if you wanna come into my business program, we need English and math. So just to give you an idea of what those, what those uh, prerequisites look like. Um, when you are submitting your application, we do ask for a school profile from our students. So that would let us know um, how your school grades, for example, and which courses are offered. So a B in your school might look like a completely different GPA than a B in somebody else's school. And that's what that school profile lets us know is how your school grades. It will also let us know uh, which AP classes, if, if any, are offered. So we have an idea of what you've taken in relation to what was available at your school. In most cases, uh, the subject prerequisites we ask uh, or should be completed at the AP level or at the senior academic level. So in your, in your final year, there are some exceptions uh, just because we do know that some AP classes, you take them in your junior year, there are nuances um, and that we, we work with students depending on those nuances. But as a general term, um, we say that your subject prerequisites should be done either at the AP level or in your grade 12 senior academic level. 
if you have taken uh, AP classes and you have uh, have examination scores of four or higher, you will be considered uh, for transfer credits on an individual basis. So after you have applied, after you've received an offer, uh, there will be documentation provided to you about how to apply for those transfer credits. So that's just something to keep top of mind. If you are uh, taking the IB diploma, so we're looking for um, minimum grade of four in three higher level and three standard level courses with a minimum 28 overall. So that is what we're looking for specifically. There, as we all know, there's been a change uh, that recently in the math curriculum. And on our website, we have the uh, broken down to say which classes will take um, AI and which classes will take AA. So we have an idea of uh, which, depending on the program that you want to apply for, which math is needed, depending on which one you've taken. Now you may have students uh, that also require English language requirement, we might have English language requirements. If you do, these are our requirements here. So IELTS is one of the more popular programs we're seeing. And so students require a 6.5 overall in order to be eligible for our four-year undergraduate degree programs. Uh, if they're taking TOEFL, MELAB, KL, PTE, these are all listed here as well. Uh, so students just have an idea. If you have studied in an English language curriculum or school or a country where English is the first language for at least four years, you will be exempt from English language requirements. So please do note that. But for my students that maybe have a year or two studying in English language, you will likely be asked to present uh, proof of English proficiency. And then finally, uh, just talking a little bit about how to apply. So there's three steps, really. Uh, you can apply either on the OUAC. So that is a sort of like a common app, but for the province of Ontario. So if you are applying to any universities in the province of Ontario, we will all be listed on the OUAC. So that's where you'd go to put in your application. Or Ryerson is also on the Common App. So it really depends on what you're on who you're applying for and sort of if you're applying for majority American schools and maybe just kind of throwing in one or two Canadian schools that happen to be on Common App, that might be the better option for you. Versus if you are looking at quite a few different um, schools in Canada, specifically Ontario, the OUAC might make more sense. Once you submit your application, uh, we send you an email that says thank you for your application and, and here's your access to the Choose Ryerson portal. So that's sort of your one-stop shop that you'll be dealing with from then on in. So all of the communications will come through your Ryerson portal. That's also where we're going to ask you to upload and submit your documents. So your transcripts, for example, Ryerson does not require SATs or ACTs. So we do not require those scores. If you do take the SATs or ACTs and you do well, feel free to upload that with your application as well but it is not a requirement in order to be admitted into the program. The deadline to apply is February 1st, 2021 and applications are already open and then students generally hear from us between February and May so we do rolling admissions so as we review applications we send out offers. Now, if you're applying for uh, one of our Grades Plus programs, so that tends to be programs that are, are creative programs, so fashion or dance, we're gonna be looking for your transcripts plus something else. So that could be you know, a portfolio if it's interior design, it could be a virtual audition if it's acting, um, and that information is also listed on our website, but that would be the additional piece that may be required for you to uh, submit. So just to confirm, say, so so if a student applies next week, for example, they would still would not be reviewed until after February 1st. The decisions wouldn't be mailed out until after February 1st. Generally students, yeah, generally students would hear between February and May. There are, depending on how early a student applies, sometimes they might be able to hear in January, but that is not very frequent and it tends to be only for the programs that are grades only because we can look at the transcripts. Um, if, a, if a student still requires, if we have to re uh, review their audition or review a portfolio or anything like that, they tend to hear between that February and May time period. Got it. And they can, as you said, they can do the scholarship application also yes. now, like now. They could get it done if they wanted to. Okay. It opened last week or earlier this week. So yes, please do. Okay. Thank you. You can do everything at once or if you have um, maybe schools that have deadlines that are earlier, get those out of the way and maybe you apply in December, right? So you have some time uh, yeah. to manage those timelines to see which schools need to be uh, meet that application earlier. And you don't have any kind of interview requirements, do you? There is, uh, at least last year, one of our programs did require an interview. It was our architecture. 
Okay. Um, so a student submits the portfolio and then the interview process is that they're taking the faculty through their portfolio to kind of right. see their perspective. But other than that, no. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So how can you find out more information and stay in touch? So we have virtual tours uh, on our website. So you can either do guided virtual tours where somebody like myself will sort of take you through campus and give you really nice anecdotes and things like that. Uh, or you could do a self-directed tour. It's completely up to you. We also are on social media. You'll see our handle there, Y Ryerson. So across Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, we have a Reddit feed. We have almost YouTube. I feel like Snapchat, I think you name it and we have it. So a uh, great way to stay in touch. Uh, we also have a lot of webinars that are coming up that you can see on the website. So I know we have um, international student chat coming up, which is a nice panel with other international students. So a great way to learn more information. There's also some great opportunities or sessions for parents of international students as well. And then finally, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. My name is Saisha. Again, that is my email. You feel free to take a picture or write it down, whatever you would like. And if you have any further questions, I am happy to answer them. So that is the presentation. Thank you. <laughs> this, was, this was great. Thank you for all of the good information. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.